I'm with something called the Internet Governance Project, and we started in 2004 during WISIS because we saw the whole WISIS process starting to focus on Internet governance, and we had a lot of expertise about that, uh, we being me and some colleagues uh, in Syracuse University and some other universities. So we thought that um, we really uh, needed to have a mechanism, a vehicle to put our expertise into the process in a way that would help the diplomats and the policy debates and provide an independent voice. So uh, the forum basically continues the dialogue of the World Summit uh, and we probably are recognized as one of the main sources of expertise about ICANN related issues in particular. So uh, it's important for us to be here. We know a lot about uh, the governance of the domain name system and the IP addressing system and, and all of the policy issues that have arisen because of that and the particular unusual governance form of ICANN. And one of the biggest controversial issues is, of course, the U.S. oversight, U.S. government's uh, unilateral oversight of ICANN. So um, uh, we have been one of the few people who have been taking the lead on uh, on proposing alternatives to that, ways of moving beyond it. Uh, we also uh, addressing some more forward-looking issues about uh, DNS security, uh, implementation of a new security protocol called DNSSEC, uh, and uh, we have also uh, taken the lead role on talking about uh, blocking and filtering of internet content, uh, censorship basically, but uh, using technical mechanisms to try to block what people can see or do on the internet. We are proposing to basically to continue with the original idea behind ICANN, which is it would be non-governmental. So we would like to see the U.S. to pull out of ICANN, just like some of us would like to see it pull out of Iraq. And uh, um, it's not like, uh, ICANN is not quite as big a disaster as Iraq, <laughs> but uh, it's, um, uh, the U.S. said it was going to supervise it for a couple of years and then it was going to pull out and turn it into a fully private sector uh, uh, organization that made policy from the bottom up. And the U.S. did not uh, uh, continue with that policy. It kind of got frozen in the middle of the transition and that's caused a lot of the p political problems that we're facing in, in WISIS and in the forum because other governments say, well, if the U.S. is in there, then we should be in there too. Uh, so the, the alternative that we're proposing is basically to, to denationalize ICANN and completely privatize it, but that of course means that you have to make it more accountable to uh, the world, uh, the, the people who are directly affected by domain name registrations and IP address allocations. So ICANN has to do some organizational reforms before it's cut loose completely, but that's what we would like to see. Other people are proposing to multilateralize ICANN, to bring more governments in and have more of a collective uh, UN type approach. Uh, other people maybe think you can tweak the status quo. We think that based on our experience in ICANN and in WISIS that governments are fundamentally interested in sort of uh, a very narrow territorial approach to internet and they're interested in advancing their own power and in uh, kind of a geopolitical issues that really have very little to do with the coordination of the internet identifiers. The basic difference would be that ICANN would be autonomous and so the the representative processes that go into the making of policy within ICANN would uh, uh, be more independent. Uh, the U.S. government sort of intervenes in ICANN or shapes ICANN in various ways that suit its interests and uh, sometimes that completely short circuits the, you know, people put a lot of time and energy into building up a policy through ICANN's own organic processes and then at the top they discover, oops, uh, the U.S. doesn't want that way, or they made a deal in the back room with VeriSign, or, or some, uh, something happened that the U.S. didn't like, so they stop it. Uh, that's been our experience. Uh, 
We are against uh, almost all forms of censorship. Um, you know, obviously when crimes against people are involved, like with child pornography um, or with uh, certain kinds of um, images of, you know, uh, that violate people's privacy, that where they're involuntarily subjected to some kind of thing which is then transmitted on the internet, then you can regulate content legitimately. But the idea that you just block certain sites and prevent people from seeing them regardless of why they want to see it, uh, regardless of whether there's any victim, we're against that. Uh, so we think that national governments should not block or filter content at all. Now, obviously, most of the world's governments will never agree with us. Maybe even most of the world's people will never agree with us because it seems like everybody wants to block or censor something. We don't have any problem if you know, individuals uh, adopt filtering software on their own. You know, it's their choice. But uh, governments do it for everybody in a territory. And we're very concerned about the Internet becoming increasingly you know, fragmented and uh, territorial and boundaried. Uh, and that's one of the beautiful things about the Internet was that it sort of just wiped away all those boundaries for a while. And now the governments are reinserting them. And we would like to see uh, a global agreement that would sort of clear a path for uh, free movement of information across borders. I'm actually quite optimistic uh, coming out of this conference. Uh, the, the forum has put uh, this kind of blocking and filtering and censorship uh, in the spotlight and the censor, the people in favor of censorship are pretty much on the defensive here. And uh, the more you discuss this issue, um, you know, the, the harder it becomes to justify the kinds of censorship that are taking place. It's not just the Chinese, it's, you know, European countries are doing it and uh, uh, lots of different countries are, a growing number of countries are asserting this kind of blocking. But the, I think the movement uh, against it uh, within the Internet Governance Forum is becoming stronger. There were three different events yesterday on various kinds of uh, censorship issues and the tone of all three of them was very much critical of censorship. There's going to always be some degree of territorial uh, control and in fact, you know, in, in terms of uh, the global internet, if, if a, a government says we won't have certain kinds of content hosted in our territory, uh, that's fine. I mean, uh, it may not be fine in a personal sense, but it's not a big problem if they just say you, you can't have a server with that kind of content here in France or here in Germany or here in China. Because then the content providers can just not put servers there. But when they start blocking and filtering what their people can see uh, in the Internet, that's where we think there's a problem. So we would like to see uh, the governments agree to limit their control to what goes on in their own borders and not try to control the borderless Internet. Well, I'm very much in favor of uh, competitive, open market approaches to the development of the telecom infrastructure. And it's clear, I'm going to be on a panel uh, this afternoon about uh, access and connectivity infrastructure issues. Um, it, it's not a simple problem. I mean, it, you know, people talk about a digital divide. There's nothing digital about it. You know, it's, a, it's the divide between countries that have money and developed economies and, and functioning institutions and countries that maybe don't have <clears throat> good institutions, you know, maybe they've just gone through a war or maybe they have uh, no wealth uh, and are just beginning to develop uh, or countries that have a combination of all of those problems uh, or they have very uh, bad uh, domestic telecommunication policies, things that restrict growth. Uh, so there's so many complicated things that can affect how the whole society develops and that's really what determines you know, the, the level of internet penetration. I think the developed world should help, <clears throat> but I, uh, 
you know, help is, is a drop in the bucket. What, what we can do is, is, a one, is gonna be a one-time thing. Here's a bunch of money, go build something. Well, you know, if you look at a country like China, which is, at one point, was adding the equivalent of a U.S. Bell operating company every two or three years in terms of the number of access lines they were building, you don't get that kind of growth by handing people things, you know. It has to be internally generated and, and sustainable. So uh, it's not like I'm hostile to the idea of um, transferring wealth to these countries if I thought it would do good. I just don't think that that is possibly going to be a solution to the billions and billions of dollars in investment and sustainable, you know, enterprises that have to develop for there to be uh, the access problem to really be attacked and solved. My greatest hope is that uh, indeed we will recognize the, the transnational borderless nature of, uh, of communication and that uh, we will all sort of come to accept uh, that the benefits of this uh, far outweigh the problems and that we can, we can handle the problems. And I'm very optimistic about the potential of allowing people to have access to the information, access to technology. I guess I'm kind of a liberal optimist in the sense that I think people are, you know, basically uh, uh, good. Uh, they have, you have to have strong rules to control, you know, bad things and bad people. But fundamentally, when you have this powerful technology and people get their hands on it, uh, good things will happen. And, and there's only, for many countries, there's nowhere to go but up, you know. I think my biggest fear is, is about the U.S. You know, the U.S. is becoming so uh, inward-looking, um, so uh, paranoid. Um, you know, we used to be the beacon of liberty. We used to be the place that people looked to. Uh, and it seems to me that we're so uh, worried about protecting ourselves at the, you know, and, and not worried about anything positive that uh, this sort of center of freedom and the center of the internet can sort of just collapse and become uh, this uh, security-driven state where we're spying on each other all the time and we're, we're restricting the technology and building all kinds of uh, uh, boundaries and restrictions into it. And uh, so uh, my worries about the, the U.S., <laughs> my, own, my own country. One word. Um, diverse. Thank you so much.